If you want to become a better visual effects artist, one of the best places to start is by learning motion tracking. You can replace screens and attach objects onto your scene all by using the point tracker in Adobe After Effects. And here's how you do it. The single point tracker works well for following the movement of an object, specifically if it goes left, right, up, or down. Open After Effects and import the clip you want to track. Create a new composition with your clip and any text layer or object you want to attach. Then create a null object, which is the tracker's target layer. Open the tracker, select the video layer, and click Track Motion. The layer panel will open and a tracking point will appear. From here, make sure that position is the only box checked and that the track type is set to transform since we're doing a single point tracker, and set your target to null layer. Now find the tracker boxes on your layer panel. The small box is called the feature region, which defines the element you want to track. The large box is the search region, which will tell After Effects where the element will be found during the shot. The small plus sign is the attach point, which is the actual point you want to track. Position your boxes so that your track point stays inside them throughout the shot and make sure that they're not too big or too small. Once your point is set, it's time to analyze the footage. You can analyze forward, backward, one frame at a time, or all continuously. Track one frame at a time when your tracking points get obscured or aren't clear and you need to move them manually. Use continuous tracking when your point is more clear or if you have tracking dots or points. Set it to go and then monitor its progress making sure to stop and readjust the boxes if it gets too off course. When the tracking is done, you'll see that the tracker has generated keyframes for every frame of the shot. Set the target to your null layer and click Apply. In most cases, you'll want to select both X and Y, but if your clip's movement is perfectly straight on a single axis, just pick that one and select OK. Now all your tracking data is on that null layer, and you can use this null as the parent for any objects or other layers that you want to attach to your tracking point. To parent your layer to your object, grab the pick whip from your object layer and drag it into your null layer, and voila! Your object moves using the exact tracking data acquired from the tracker. Adjust the anchor point, scale, position, or any other controls so that your object fits in perfectly to your scene if necessary. The process for two-point tracking is exactly the same as with the single-point tracker, but by using a two-point tracker, we're able to track not only the position, but also the scale and rotation. Turn on these two options to bring up two track boxes and position them just as you did before. Perform your track, edit your target, apply the information, then parent and adjust your object or text layer. Turn on your 3D layer for adding some perspective to your object's position in the scene by pivoting or rotating it accordingly. The four-point tracker works just like other trackers we've discussed, but unlike the single-point and two-point trackers, the four-point tracker applies the tracking data directly to an image or video. This works best for replacing screens or billboards, like this clip of someone on their phone. Open your clip in a new composition, and click Track Motion like before. This time you want to select Perspective Corner Pin, so it will match the screen's perspective. Move the four boxes to the corners of your clip and begin your track, watching for any drifting as it goes and adjusting as necessary. Once it's done tracking, import your replacement photo or video into the composition, make it the target of your track, then apply the data. Play it back to make sure everything looks okay, and you've got a basic screen replacement. If you're not happy with your track, you can tweak your options to try and get better results. In the channel section, select RGB if your tracked element is a distinct color. Luminance is for when the tracked feature has a different brightness than the surrounding area, and saturation is for tracking objects that are surrounded by variations of the same color. Enhancing the image before matching means the image is temporarily blurred or sharpened before each keyframe is set. Track fields is for interlaced footage, doubling the frame rate for better tracking. Subpixel positioning tells the tracker to use fractions of pixels for each keyframe. When it's off, it uses whole pixels for keyframing. Adapting the feature on every frame means that the tracker will use information from the previous frame's feature region for analysis, as opposed to using the information from the beginning of the track. Finally, tell the tracker to continue, stop, adapt, extrapolate, or estimate the future motion and create a keyframe from that estimation. When using the point tracker, always make sure that you choose features that have good contrast, a distinct and consistent shape and color, and as much visibility as possible throughout the entire shot. From there, you just need to have fun with your new motion tracking skill. If you like this video, check out our YouTube channel and subscribe for more tutorials. You can also read the Pond5 blog for an in-depth companion piece 
as well as other filmmaking tips and tricks. And as always, head over to Pond5.com to get millions of video clips and other assets to use in your next project.